it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class. And today I'll be using one of our Fashion Girl stamps and showing you some fun watercolor techniques using this stamp. And here's a look at the card we'll be creating and the featured stamp called Dress to Impress. So to begin, I am working on Canson 140 pound watercolor paper and I'm going to stamp my image using Ranger Archival Ink in the color of Watering Can. And I really like this color of ink with these Fashion Girl stamps because it keeps the lines looking really delicate and sort of whimsical, which matches the image themselves, as opposed to a really dark black line. So once I've stamped that onto this watercolor paper, I want to make sure it's completely dry. So these archival inks, once they are dry, they are totally waterproof, but I just like to use my heat gun on it just a little bit to be sure it's totally dry and then I can start painting right away. I'll be painting this using Secura Koi watercolor field sketch box, mixing some of the colors off to the side and some of them pulling right from the pans of watercolor. And I'm just using a watercolor brush and clean water to mix those. Here you can see where I'm mixing up some yellows and some oranges to begin on her skirt. So these watercolors dry quite a bit lighter, so I will put several layers on. To begin, I'm just putting on a light color, just coloring right over the top of her dress. That also gives me a chance to get that area completely wet down. So when I add more color, more intense color, it's going to naturally blend on the areas where it is already wet. So just off camera there, I'm mixing up some more color. And by using multiple colors on one area, it just gives more dimension to the painting. So here I'm adding a darker color up at the top. I'm moving into a little bit brighter color as I move down. And I am allowing this to pool and puddle on the dress. So I'm putting on a pretty thick layer with water and color. And I like that that gives it that really fresh, artsy watercolor look, which I think is a nice match for these style of images. You'll notice that often when I'm dropping this color in here, I am pouncing my brush with the color onto the wet area as opposed to swiping it across. And that just allows the water to naturally blend the color. If you want to move it, you can see I'm pushing that darker color up towards the top because I wanted that to be a little bit darker up near the top of her skirt. So that's another way you can add shading before it's dry. You can use your brush to move it, move the color, and wherever you lift your brush up that the last time is where the darkest color will remain. Now here I just wanted to show you the colors I used to mix up her skin tone. I used the white and then just a little bit of this peach color, just a touch, to mix that up. And when I go back to the image here, you'll see that I finished painting using the same techniques, um, her scarf and her shirt and a few other details. And now I'm just going to go in and add some color to her body. And I don't do a lot of shading with this. The area that's covered is so small. And I find just a light layer is all that's needed. If you wanted to intensify that, you could add more of the peach color or use less of the white when mixing it up. The one area where I will do a little bit of shading is on her cheeks. So you'll see here I'll come in and do that after I've finished. And like I said before, these dry quite a bit lighter so you can see I'm adding a couple of layers of color. And then while it's still wet on her face area, I'm just mixing up a real light pink and just adding a touch of that onto her cheeks. And because it's still wet, that'll just kind of naturally blend. Now I'm going to do her hair with some browns, and you'll have to excuse my hair that's also in the camera here. Just had to get a good view of what I was painting. So I'm just kind of putting on that first layer, and then I'll go in and add more shading to the areas that I want to be darker. But one thing I do love about these Fashion Girl images is that you don't have to do a lot of intense shading. The area that you're coloring is pretty small and it just has a whimsical look to it. So it doesn't have to be intricately shaded, um, really dark to light on the hair or the other, really anything that you're coloring on it. 
flat simple color actually looks really cute on these as well. So once it was dry, I did go back and just add, right over the lines that are drawn there, a little bit darker brown. And I did that with a little bit smaller brush as well. So here is one thing I like to do because I stamped this with the watering can ink pad. It gave it that lighter look. It wasn't that harsh black, but I do like to go in with a Faber Castell Design Memory Craft Pit Pit Artist Pen. This is a really small tip, the extra small tip, and I'm just going over just a few details on the image, and I think this gives it a finished look. But what I love about it is that. I can add this darker black only where I want it, and I can leave the lighter, more subtle ink color like on her dress or her, her jewelry or her all those little details on her skirt. I don't have to have that be a harsh black color. So I can just really quickly go in and add a few details with the black. I'm doing it with a really light touch so it gives it almost a sketched look so you don't have to perfectly outline anything. Gave her a little waistband as well. And you can add as much or little of this black outlining as you would like. I've done some where I've only done it to the eyes and the eyelashes, and that can be quite effective as well. Now that pen is an India ink, so it is waterproof once it's dry. So I can go back and add more details and add more painting, and I don't have to worry about that running at all. So now I'm going to paint the background around her. So first I put down just clear water, and now I'm dropping in this blue color to the areas that were wet. I first put my paintbrush down with the ink where I want it to be the darkest, which is closest to her body or to the image. So you can see there I drop that in and then I can move that out towards the areas further away from her. If you have any harsh lines around the outside, you can always just take your brush with clear water and blend that. That way you can go from a color out to no color on the edge of your paper. There you can see I'm blending that out where it was a little bit of a harsh line. So I continue to do that all the way around. And then it dried a little bit lighter, so I did go back and just darken it up in a few places. There, I just put that color down and then used water along the outside to blend it out. I'm going to ground the image so I put down just a light layer of brown blending that with water towards the outer edges or the outer perimeter of the card. I'm going to let that dry Then I wanted to tie in a little bit to that color of her scarf so I'm just taking that same color and adding it to the brown ink adding more brown in with that and it just gives a tint of that color at the bottom. Now, I did add a little bit more than I wanted, so I went in with the baby white and pulled up some of that and added more in more brown. To finish off my card, I painted my background using the same techniques as I did with the blue behind the girl. I also painted all my embellishments using the same watercolors and mounted them to the card using dimensional adhesive. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the Penny Black channel. You can also like our page on Facebook, visit us on Pinterest and Twitter, as well as our website and blog.
And here's a list of all the supplies used in creating today's card. 